Ah, oh, hair is so tense. The hair is so intense. Oh, God. So. Why, hello there. My name's Alice, I'm an illustrator, sculptor, and your host on this very fine day. Welcome back to the Mushroom Nook Studio. Things tend to get a little strange around here. Now, as an illustrator, I am very much of the traditional variety. I do use Photoshop to edit and clean up my pictures after I've scanned them in, but in terms of creating the artwork, my personal weapons of choice are dip pens and ink, and watercolors. Now about a month ago on Instagram, I made a little series of stories talking about my little nips collection. And it all went down rather well. And I've had a few requests asking me to make a video out of it. So here we are. But to take it a step further, I'm not only going to be showing you my lovely nips, I will also be demonstrating how I use them in an illustration. I will preface that yes, I have been trained in cursive writing for five years in primary school as part of the Vietnamese curriculum. And yes, I do have a bachelor degree in illustration. But I don't think I would call myself a professional calligrapher. That's a very specific job title that I don't particularly feel qualified to take on. I've not been trained in any specialized calligraphy courses and when it comes to using dip pens in writing and drawing, I very much consider myself self-taught. So do not come for me. Okay, I see you. I see you. Want to come for me? Don't. Okay? Because I'm not there for you to come for. Cool. And with that said, let's get into it. I'm having way too much fun with this. <laughs> First of all, let's talk about the nip holders, or the pen portion of the nip pen. I have here a larger one, a smaller one, and an oblique one. I'll get to that in a minute. These vary in prices depending on how fancy you're feeling. You can get plastic ones for as cheaply as two pounds and they would work just as well. My personal preference are these five pound wooden ones with the cork handles because if you know me, you know that I have a bit of a fetish for cork. Inside the holder, you should find these little metal prongs that hold your nips in place. All you need to do is slide them in. Sometimes it takes a little adjustments for the nip to sit securely, but otherwise it is fairly straightforward. The plastic ones has a plastic groove instead of the prongs, but the principles remain the same. Choosing the right ink is an important part of using dip pens. The best ones I found are this Higgins Black Magic ink, though I do prefer this Cali ink by De La Roni. I like to layer watercolor directly over my ink work sometimes, so it's important to me that the ink is waterproof, which these are. But non-waterproof inks would work just as well. What you don't want are any inks containing shellac, like Indian ink for example, because those would dry on the nibs as you're using it and it's impossible to get it off then and it often means you end up having to toss the whole nib away. Normally, and especially when I'm out and about drawing, I would just dip the pen directly into these ink pots, but when I'm at home, I do take pleasure in using this schmexy thing I got as a Christmas present once. I mean, just look at it. You've probably gathered by now that nibs are the little metal bits that you actually use for your drawing and writing activities. They are quite delicate, so whether you're careful or not, you will go through them. That's why I normally buy two or three of the same nib at a time. Most calligraphy suppliers would sell these pretty little nib tins. I have two, one for the unused and dead nibs, and the other for the nibs I'm currently using. Right, enough of the preamble. These are the nibs that I currently use the most. This first guy is a Leonard Shakespeare nib. He is a bit of a novelty, but works surprisingly well. He's not too terribly flexible, and the tip is reasonably big, 
making him ideal for thicker outline work. He's also the first ever type of nib that I use, and I still use him, so I would recommend him to beginners. I used to find all my supplies in an art shop near me, but since I've moved, I've decided to get them online now, and I will link the website to the shop that I use below. The second guy is a Gilo 1950 artist drawing pen nib, and this is the nib that I use the most for drawing. He is quite flexible, but not too much, which allows him to produce a very nice range of line thicknesses. He also allows the ink to flow very smoothly, which is one of the most important things when it comes to dip pen nibs. I use them for pretty much everything. And thirdly, we have the Gilo 291 Mapping Pen Nib. He is tiny, both the nib itself and the tip. I use them for very fine detail work, like when I want to draw tiny faces or create very, very smooth crosshatch shading. Now, since he is so small, he is very delicate and flexible. His tip is as fine and sharp as a needle, which means that it's very easy for him to get caught on paper grains. I would only use him when I'm working on very smooth paper. You also have to be very patient because he doesn't hold that much ink, so you'll find yourself having to dip very often. These are the nibs I use for writing. The Glot 303 will suit most of your usual calligraphy writing needs. The next two are what's called round hand nibs, one at size 2.5 and, and one at size 5. You may notice that these have larger flat tips. This makes them ideal for black letter calligraphy, or if you want some huge difference in stroke thicknesses in your writing. Black letter is this family of fonts that you would recognize to be ye olde English. They combine both elements of serifs and sans serifs, and seem really complicated at first. Unlike normal calligraphy where things are quite fluid and flowing, with black letter you are basically drawing a series of stiff little strokes, but they are quite fun to write once you've gotten the hang of it. For this demonstration illustration, try and saying that five times fast, I chose this quote by Voltaire that reads, To hold a pen is to be at war. Now, Voltaire was saying it in the context of censorship, but it also reminds me of a conversation I had with a tutor back in uni. We both found that art and drawing can be very therapeutic for hobbyists, but for professional artists, and especially illustrators, drawing is rarely a relaxing activity. Your brain is constantly active thinking of the composition and meaning of the piece, and every pen stroke is a carefully considered decision. You're also stressing out as to whether your hand is deciding to obey your brain today, and if the image currently being produced is actually the same one you have in your head. Spoiler alert, most often it's not. It's like when a book gets adapted into a movie, you're lucky if the two things resemble each other at all. Drawing is often a painful activity. Fortunately, you're a masochist, so who cares? One of the reasons why I enjoy dip pens over the industry standard of Micron fine liners is the range of quality of line that you can get. With a fine liner, you get one kind of thickness with a pen, and that's it. With dip pens, things are more unpredictable. You have less control over the process, which allows for unexpected things to happen, like when an ink blob decides to randomly yeet itself straight onto the artwork, and you get to have fun trying to solve that problem. As annoying as it is, I do find that it allows the drawing to have more life. And also, I'm a hipster. <laughs> as you can see here, I use the oblique nib holder for writing. The offset angle means that my hand is not directly on top of what I'm writing, allowing me to see what I'm doing a bit better. You can also get an oblique nip if you don't want to get a whole other holder.
At first, I was going to do just the one illustration for this video, but then I caught the bug and wanted to do some more handwriting, so I decided to make this companion piece, featuring another Voltaire quote, that is strangely relevant for the strange time we're living in right now. It reads, I have wanted to kill myself a hundred times, but somehow I am still in love with life. This ridiculous weakness is perhaps one of our more stupid melancholy propensities. For is there anything more stupid than to be eager to go on carrying a burden which one would gladly throw away, to loathe one's very being and yet to hold it fast, to fondle the snake that devours us until it has eaten our hearts away? Very dramatic, very on brand. And that's it! I hope you've enjoyed my nip nips. Get it? Nips? Yeah. I would never stop being funny. Fight me. I hope you found it helpful and informative in some way. Like, subscribe, toll that sacred bell, all that good stuff. Find me across the interwebs through the information in the description below. Stay home, stay safe or something and I will see you around these parts very soon. Bye. My personal weapons of choice when it comes to creating artwork are dip pens and ink and watercolors.